Hello again and welcome to <laughs> Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner. Brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Today, uh, the information on today's program was gathered from many different places and many different people. If you hear yourself in the conversation today, it is not all about you. If you're looking for a speaking in opportunity for us to come and speak at your location, give us a call 727-422-1833 or send me an email dick at ewfw.org. Today we have Miss Robin with us. Miss Robin, how are you doing today? I am terrific. Fantastic. I understand that you're bringing to us, the Leadership Wrangler here, a new subject to talk about. Well, I think it's one that's been percolating for a while. We just have chosen to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but that for some reason, the past couple of weeks, this has really um, been inter interjections by a lot of people about this topic. Okay. Okay. So you ready for the title? I'm ready for the title. Let's okay, go. This is profound. Denomination identification. Denomination identification. Now, if I'd done research, I probably would have check through Google or something, how many denominations of churches we actually have in this country. I know it's a lot. A bunch. I know it's mm -hmm. a lot. Um, but I also know that in our area for the past few years, so many churches have been pulling down the part and putting new signs up that don't say what denomination they are. They're a church. Okay. And they have a congregation and they have a pastors and staff and all that. But nowhere on the outside of the building does it say if they're a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or a Catholic or any of the other or 5, else, huh? denominations. Right. Um, and you can't always tell by the outside of the building. Sometimes it's 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 identifiable, but not always, and you can't always go by that anyway. Right. So I'm I don't understand why the sudden move is to move away from the denominational name. I know there's for the past many, many years, probably three or four decades, mm -hmm. been um, the baby Baptist churches that are the quick growing hot churches. They were the first ones with all the multimedia right. kind of stuff going on. Um, and we probably need to give credit to the Catholics because back in the 60s, they started doing folk masses. Okay. Okay. So a lot of the music that we're using in in Protestant churches the past 40 some years has actually come out of the Catholic Church. <laughs> oh, well. Um, which was an interesting when I discovered that. So here we have um, churches are building up and the pastor is passionate and he can gather people and grow people and put programs into place that people can grow and develop and bring their friends in. The churches are mega churches. They're huge. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of members. Uh -huh. We have one around the corner that has 7,000 members. Um, on the other hand, the denominational churches are on a downward thing. And I don't think what some people realize is a lot of those mega churches actually are part of a, a national or international organization. They just don't talk about well, it. Well, let's look at this. It's marketing and branding is what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is why are churches suddenly don't want to brand themselves? Well, I think they are branding themselves, but they're rebranding in a different manner to get people to be more acceptable of the word church. Oh, Okay. You know, the building itself sometimes the puts building. puts people off that, mm -hmm. that that you could only, you know, worship in this church that has a building, <laughs> that has a steeple, that has oh, yeah, all these different steeple, things the bell tower, right? yeah. that, that, that says church. Mm -hmm. And the new churches that I see popping up so quickly without these names on them are in strip malls. Oh, they're, yeah. they're in old... Old Walmarts. Um, old Walmarts Huge or grocery one. stores right. uh, that are being redone, and, and but they're made with local people. And it's, okay. I think that that's the big difference. Oh, so they're starting with local people, and local people are doing the renovations Well, and instead of people coming in from some other place to take and plant, plant a church, yeah. uh, this is people in the local area saying, you know, gee, we, we love a church, but we're, we don't really want to be hooked to a national organization that tells, tells us, what us what to do. Okay, and and are the or we have to pay dues to. <laughs> oh, there's that. Um, and are the people that are joining those churches? I had a good question. I had a good question a minute ago. Are they joining those churches because they're different from hmm. what they grew up with, and they were looking for something different because of whatever reason? Um, or are they listening to the people and meeting their needs instead of saying, "This is wow. what we have. Come and get it." Okay, now let's take a look at that. Okay. Are the churches that are popping up without a denominational name listening to people 
in the area listen to their people and saying hey this, these are programs we can be offering to them mm -hmm. and they're doing that at a place where they can they can make it happen are they saying what do you need or are they dumbing down the whole word to or a, to a it, place that's really <laughs> not applicable right to anybody or or oh there's another or, word. the third choice i i always take and put in are they actually giving the people something from the word that they can put in their life right then and there and so it becomes applicable about their daily life and do we have an answer well I don't if know. you're going to ask you know dick powell he's going to tell you that it's it's they're listening to people saying look I, I need something i can put into my life right now not theoretical or or anything else right I, I need it right now i i need to know how to handle money i need to know how to handle relationships i i, I need to my know how need how programs. to take and handle my children i right. I, I, I need these things and, we need all these things and because they're wanting in the non-denominational churches in my view um are, are providing those right i think that's a huge piece to think about Okay. So to me, the not the denominational, the denominational, the denominational people um, who are taking their name off, the Presbyterian name off, or the Baptist, Baptist name the off, or Methodist. or the Methodist name off. I love the Methodists because they do it in a really great way. They leave their symbol so you know what it means, but they take the name Methodist off. I I, I think they're pretty smart. Um, and we are hearing this, like I said, over the past couple of weeks from people that were just running into it, you know, events and things. They're asking and, the question. Yeah, they're saying, I don't know what to think. What what happens once you take the, the name, whether you take the logo down or not, mm -hmm. when you take the name down, what does that mean? Um, and things are changing. I'm not sure why or where the changes are coming from, mm -hmm. which is one of the things we run into in our in our area. A couple of different people have told us, you know, specifically uh, that they, they took the name down, but then everything changed. Well, the denominations, um, they have they have a large organization, right. and it's a large organization. They have to kind of like pay dues. It's a per head capita tax. Yeah, per capita. And in, in my world, it's a tax. Okay, I I understand that there's going <laughs> to be some church, tax. church leaders are going to take yeah. and come after me. But the the thing is, it's still a per capita that mm -hmm. you're paying to the the great organization, mother church. Um, Who is using it to operate the organization? And, and I, mean, I understand that. Yeah, the and need, I understand the need, that. The need, yeah. I do believe, though, that the original churches were started in homes. They were started in small groups, and in barns. The, the pastors who came up uh, felt they really had a calling, and and no, they didn't have a lot of education. You know, they did the best they could with the knowledge they had. They read the Bible. They read the Bible. And, 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 they, and they did their best to put forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I believe we're so overeducated and so overly indulged into it that the normal people sitting in the pews, I, I don't believe that they really can grasp the day-to-day -day things that is trying to be put across. The other part is, as I see over and over, that as we work with other churches, that leadership within the churches do not understand what their roles are, and that's normally because the pastor is looked at as the ultimate the ultimate leader, yeah. which they are not. The people are. Right. Wow, what a thought! We've, we've talked before about it. it should not be the pastor's job to make sure the bathrooms get clean, the lights get turned off, and the doors get locked. Um, that should be another group of people within the congregation's so, job to have some responsibilities and not everything goes back to the pastor. In the non-denominational churches, how, how how do they choose those pastors? I have no idea. Do you? Well, they're usually someone who comes up and says, I want to be a pastor. Be a pastor. And, 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 they're, and they're able to build a flock. They're able to build well, a they're group. Well, they're people that can gather people and hold them. The second part about that is they're people who can build a team. And the yes. team actually gathers the people. The right. pastor really doesn't. It's that team who who says, "Look, this is a good thing to do, and this is a good place to be, and and we're we're going to offer this opportunity." Right? Because face it, when you walk into a, a church for the first time for worship mm -hmm. service, you get a feel, um, body wow. language, the feel, the way people look, the way they dress, the way they interact, if they interact, um, all those kinds of things um, affect the way you feel about that and whether you go back or not. Okay, um, so let's take a look at some churches that we know of that we've actually visited okay um, 
there was one down south that we went to and and it was interesting how we, as we walked in, there was a fireplace there on the right-hand side. It kind of felt warm and cozy. Yeah, they, were, they, they had replaced, in essence, the narthex mm -hmm. where people... The gathering know, The gathering location. place before you go in or when you come out or whatever. Um, the chit-chat place, however you you do it. Um, they, they had sort of altered that. So there was a visitor's desk on one side, but the rest looked like a living room or a family room. And, and you could hang out there, and it was, it it was, was very welcoming. It was kind of a neat place welcoming. to go and hang out, grab a cup of coffee, and talk to other people, kind right. of share things and, and move along. I felt very comfortable. But when I walked through the doors into the chapel, yeah. um, it was an entirely different feeling. Different it was feeling. very cold. It was yeah. very uninviting. And, and the people were sitting in places that looked like they've been sitting for a long time, just so you know. <laughs> um, pew. So it was kind of, it was kind of this this real well, dichotomy. Not, not only that, but being a visitor to a new church, you you want to watch which pew you sit in because <laughs> you don't want to sit in somebody's <laughs> pew. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, so pew. Is someone's regular spot? Are you saving it? Well, you need to be kind of open to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always interesting to go into a different, and that's been my our life. And the visit had you know, been a and different we, we visited different many reasons. different churches. Um, um, that it's very it's very different. One of the other churches that is a denominational has a big sign out front and everything like that, and we walked into that. Um, no covered over overwear, so you can drop people off, stay dry. Oh yeah. Uh, the no, doors, the doors are interesting, and the, every window is dirty. Um, bathrooms aren't real clean. I know those are terrible things. You think Dick Powell's really nut nutty here, but, but those know, are things that I'll be honest with you. It matters. Matters. So mm -hmm. when you go to a real structured place and you find unstructure, it's kind of a strange, weird. It doesn't track. So that's what I'm saying is that, and then Robin, I think that's really why people start taking those names off. They take off the expectations of whatever someone of grew up what, with 40, of 50, what 60 you grew years up ago. With. Okay. Okay. That. So and you remove the expectation of what you should find when you walk through those doors, whether it's a strip store or, or it's an old grocery store yeah. or what? A mega store, yeah. You know, the, the, the mega, mega one at the old grocery store, I have to tell you, I, I was impressed. Oh, they had a coffee bar outside. I, I was really impressed. On the place. level with Starbucks. Not that they they come on in. Hey, no, we, we don't care. Just come on in. I don't care. The other thing about that church was very interesting. It was a big church. It they was had several thousand members, and it was in a big uh, repurposed grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no windows, so it's very dark in there. And they had all the screens and all the all the um, okay. all the the cool stuff going on. But as you walked in the door, there was an ATM machine. It was an ATM this machine. Is pretty huge. Easy to give. Because think about it. Um, in, they in they didn't church, pass the plate, by the way. No, they don't pass the plate. In our church, when we had about 1,500 members, we had a full-time bookkeeper because it took mm -hmm. a full-time bookkeeper 40 hours a week to handle our, our bank accounts and our, our offerings and our expenses and everything else. Okay, so this is a seven, 8,000 member church. Money had 10. And they have ATM machines. And guess what? The deal is they don't have to have a bookkeeper. Because the eighteen inches do all the work. I thought, man, that is huge. Let's get one. They don't disperse cash. It's mm -hmm. only cash in, checks in. You know, that's it. Yep. But at the end of the quarter of the year, and man, it is no problem getting those statements out. I'm like, wow, this is profound. How much does an ATM machine cost? How much could that cost? I don't know. But it was, it was well worth their while. It was such an interesting place. Phenomenal. You don't have to stop in the middle of worship to pass the plate. <laughs> what I yeah. really enjoyed though is you walked in. I was watching other people who had children, okay. and, and as the children came in, there was this huge children's area, divided up by ages, of course, but the things that they had there available that related to church teaching, okay? In other words, there were some games, there were some opportunities, but they all had the message going with it. Much different than the other places that I'd kind of been, I would call a little bit stodgy. <laughs> um, Old school. <laughs> they were very rigid but mm. they weren't teaching they were just well here's some games to play they were babysitting stay busy and stay out of my waist while we be talk quiet. to your parents right and be quiet, um yeah. now one which of the kind churches, of bothered me by the way uh, one of the churches <laughs> i've been in um uh, lately for for meetings and stuff has at the back of their sanctuary area a um a prey yard mm -hmm. and it's, it's a playground for the kids and it's it's got all those little kind of you know toddler fancy things around it it's a toys in there for young children which i thought was awesome because you know one person could sit there a 14 year old could sit there and watch the kids the parents are right there if there's a problem and they learn to be quiet in church kind of soon yeah. that was pretty profound um also one of the things i was going to talk about was um 
uh, this mega church we we're talking about, you can actually get buy your coffee. Yeah. You're buying coffee, they're not giving it to and you. Buy your coffee take and it in. take it in with you. It's fine because it's all cement floors and who cares. Um, but the um, other part, part is there's another church that has a diminishing congregation is pulled out back five, six, eight rows oh. of pews and put in like pub tables, two different heights. So Depending you can sit back people. there, you can get a cup of coffee in the narthex, mm -hmm. and um, they have a nice coffee station out there, mm -hmm. get, and sit back there if you want to sit in the back of the church and be like, I mean, we're Presbyterians, so we're going to sit in the back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah, we become cultured that way. Um, but to sit in the back of the church and, and just be part of the congregation and enjoy your coffee. I, I have to tell you that I really enjoyed this pastor who did this. The, the, took the Because no one sat in the back pews anyhow. He removed them, but he made them at a layered situation. So there was the back layer was higher than that came down and right. then then came down to the where the people were sitting in the, the pew pews. Level, yeah. And so it kind of gave this different level. And it, it was, was like being in an auditorium. It was it was, it was just such a neat feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I was there to kind of watch and listen to his to his uh, sermon. And that was kind of my job for the day. And so I was sitting in the back having a cup of coffee and listening to different people around me um how they responded to that situation well the other part and of that, it was just fantastic the part that was most people were sitting in the back because we were there for our worship at a meeting mm -hmm. uh we're sitting in the back were members of the church who would not have even been in that room with us at that time but they were kind of in between their their mm -hmm. their volunteer job for, for the day and they came back and were very open with talking about you about how wonderful it was and what a great idea and they didn't think it was going to fly it was kind of weird to begin with but it was it was again welcome come on in and have a cup of coffee and we'll sit back here if you have questions during the service for a visitor that's awesome it was just a neat thing so um, and that's why when when i looked at this and this was a church we had been working with for a couple of years oh, yeah, so one of our know. clients <laughs> um and and they actually took some of the suggestions that we were giving them and when they've seen their church start to grow now and which is unusual. Uh, Robert, Robert and I do not have all the answers, just yeah. so you know. We just okay. know, we can we can ask you the questions. We, we just kind of ask good questions and, mm -hmm. and try to, to steer a little bit. The neat part about this was is their congregation was made up of mainly people our age or older. And now it's starting to become our age and younger. Yeah, they had um, no youth program at all. And now they do. Because they didn't have the only time they had children in church was if they came with their grandparents. Most of the people <laughs> in this um, community have retired to Florida from someplace mm -hmm. up north. Most of them east, eastern seaboard. So they they culturally they're not real different, but they're not really necessarily the same either. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a growing area. Um, and again, that church is growing. Most churches in our denomination, really in our area, are not growing. It's it's they're just really like crazy. amazing to me. Um, what we're trying to take and really put across to you is, is as you walk, as you drive around or you go around, take a look at the churches and take a look at their church signs. Read the signs. First of all, can you read the sign? Yeah, that's a that's a tough Don't one. Get us started on that one. Um, can <clears throat> you read the sign and see it. what it says? Does it say that they're you know a denomination? You know, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, Church Lutheran, Church of Christ, whatever, LDS, whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is. Does it actually say who they are? And that's what Rob and I are really asking. So many of the churches that we're noticing do not say who they are. So are they ashamed? And that's that's the question. Or we're do asking. they think because they don't say it, more people will come in and find out why? It's like I, I wouldn't encourage me. Um, well, but it, I have it, to tell you, I'm going to talk about the Jewish churches. Okay. Um, where we live, synagogues. It's this, the temples, mm -hmm. the synagogues. Okay. Um, where we live, there are two on one of the um, semi-busy north-south mm -hmm. routes through our county. And they're they're not real close together, but not real far apart either. They're not far apart. And the difference is one is reformed and one is more traditional. Mm -hmm. So they know the they know. I mean, if you're Jewish, you know the difference. Um, and we don't need to talk about that. But um, you you know before you go in if they're more more reformed or more traditional, mm -hmm. and you can you know at that point which one you're going to relate better with. You can pretty much tell that by but, their sign out front. Probably, but they're growing congregations. Um, and they're doing things differently to accommodate 2019 <clears throat> American Jewish people. I um, think what I'm seeing is is that people want to be told the truth. And, and when you see a sign that doesn't even say who and what they are, mm -hmm. personally, I say to myself, what are they hiding? <laughs> and then I, I really ask, why would they want to hide 
And because we all belong to, to, to different denominations. Even if it's a non-denominational church, you belong to a denomination. <laughs> Okay, it's non-denominational, but it's you. I guarantee that non-denominational church, if you ask, belong to a bigger group, someplace. Yes, because someone has to take and put the stamp of approval on their pastors. I guarantee. Oh, they have to give them ideas or some kind of connection or somewhere to go if you have a problem. So I'm I'm saying to you, why are you taking your name off your sign? And that's the question, Robin asked. And of course, this is what people are coming to us and saying. Hey, Robin and Dick, we have noticed, and why is that happening? And we're going, we don't Hello. know. We here's what, here's what we need from you. We need the leaders out there who listen to Robin and Dick to send us an email or give us a phone call, follow up with us and say, hey, we're seeing it too, or here's the reason why. We, we need your help to answer these questions. Our phone number is easy, 727-422-1833. And emails simple, right? Dick, D I C K, at E W F W dot org. Doesn't get any easier than that. Help us out. Yeah. This is this is this is really getting to be some questions on churches, on things that are happening in the community and our nation that Robin and I just we we're doing our best to answer your questions. But I have to tell you that the phone calls we do get, the emails we do get, um, are quite <laughs> well and pertinent. Yeah, they are. And the main thing right now is um, the, the private conversations. People are saying, why is my church doing this? And what's the benefit? Because that's the mm-hmm. first question. Was, what is the benefit of that? And why are they ashamed of being a dom- denomination? And how do I, how do I, as a member, really feel about that? And we're talking people that have been members of these churches for decades. And they want to know how. Decades. They want to know how to respond. And they want to know how. They're, they're saying, "What should I think?" <laughs> and, uh, and and I what should know. I do? And let me know because our church may be next. I don't know. And here's the thing. So, is if if you don't know those answers, what should I do? And and who should I talk to? You really need to look into the structure of your church organization. How so they, you can how you, are they connected? You can really start getting some answers mm-hmm. for yourself. What we're finding is the people who are talking to us on a one on one who really do wish to have their names not used. They're they smart. really <laughs> they're smart. <laughs> they really didn't know where to go to get answers. So they come to Robin and Dick. And we don't really have the answers. <laughs> we don't really have the answers. So what we've had to do oh, is... we can ask questions. We've had to go to the leaders of the denominations. And uh, we didn't get a lot of answers there either. Yeah. So if this is bothering you, you need to follow up on it. And I think that's the point of this whole conversation. Well, like, if something's bothering you about your church, find out, just you need to ask questions. questions. Don't just sit there don't, and listen. Don't count on getting answers. But, but, <laughs> don't, ask the but don't give up. And don't stop asking the questions. I think that's the that's the point there. Even if you say, someone says something about, I heard you were wondering, you go, yeah, I haven't got an answer yet. What do you think? Or but, could you ask the same question? <laughs> See if you get an answer and let me know. So many of us were raised, though, at especially my age, we were raised in churches that you weren't really encouraged to ask questions. Well, and you actually, were. You, you really were not <laughs> Not, not. They're probably answered with um, <laughs> those things that you say to people. Have to be quiet. I, however, my household, my mm-hmm. parents, especially my father, encouraged us to ask questions and question everything and not back down. Um, but that can also tell you that my parents stopped going to church in 1969 uh, because of uh, the, the way things were going to church were incorrect and they weren't getting any answers. And they couldn't get any answers. And, and that, that no, was a terrible no part. And there were some weird things going on. I mean, people were getting hurt, hurt feelings. And they weren't the only ones that stopped going to that church in 1969 and never went back to church. So as you go to church or you drive down the road, do look at your sign where you where you attend. They can ask that question. Look at your literature that comes out, the top of your headlines. Of <laughs> your website. Your, your website, your, your bulletin. Find, just look at them. Uh, I mean, I, I'm there, just encouraging you because maybe, like us, it happened and then you realized it. Mm-hmm. And then you have to ask the question. I, I'll also tell you one thing that happened many years ago, and it's since been rectified, um, that uh, they've got new hymnals. 
in our <laughs> church and they're not even denominational hymnals. They weren't. Um, and we're like, where does this, this come from? And well, the choir had a committee in or whatever with the music director and a pastor and they chose this other hymnal. And um, which means a lot of your favorite denominational hymns aren't in it. And there's all these new songs you never heard of. Um, but that's like I said, it has been since rectified and we now have um, denominational <laughs> hymnals in our pews. I also have been in churches where the denominational hymnal is from the 1950s and our denomination is on its third, at least its third uh, revision of that. Um, and I wonder how progressive or unprogressive that church is that they're still using the hymnals from the 1950s. I mean, they're kind of falling apart and looking worn, but they're still using them. And we're like, whoa, their people don't know. There's a couple new versions out there. So I think what Robin and I attention. are telling you is, is, first of all, pay attention. Know where you go. Mm, and why you go. Okay. Know where you go and, and why you're there and ask questions of those who are in the leadership positions mm -hmm. of things that you want to know. And if they are not able to give you answers, keep going up the ladder until you find out the answer. And then I want to do encourage you to do just one more thing. I want you to share that answer with people around you. Because I guarantee you're not the only one asking that question. I had a pastor say to me the other day, you're the only one who ever asked questions of me. And I said, well, no, they're just not real comfortable to come and talk to you. Give me their names. Oh, I yeah, said, sure. I said, I'm not going to give you their names. That, that that would be, you know, giving up. That's terrible. Well, the other part of that is we had a pastor several years ago who um, we asked him some questions one time. And... Uh, he gave us a funny look and didn't answer the question. But a couple of Sundays later, we got an answer from the pulpit. Oh, yeah. Uh, he did not use names. But after one of those um, sections of the sermon, um, the people we sat with in the area <laughs> after said, oh, my goodness, I asked him that question a couple weeks ago. And that's how he answered it. And I went, I asked him the same question. <laughs> I'm so See? So maybe we shouldn't be embarrassed. But um, his answer was not, was not what we liked. But, that but at least was, it was an answer. But it was an answer. And again, it, did, it was very public and came yeah. from the pulpit. Didn't agree with it. but So at, the, at that point, we really weren't sure how many people had asked him the same question. Yeah. See, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. There's always going to be someone who has that same question that you do. Yeah. Don't be afraid to, to keep on moving it up. And you might want to find out if there's people like that who, who has the better wordsmithing and can ask ah. the question better because I'm not always the best one with how to phrase the question. <laughs> so I've come to the point at this point in my life where occasionally when I want a question phrased, I say, oh. does this read okay or is there something we can do better? And, and people and know me, I'm, I'm pretty darn direct. So right. uh, <laughs> right. if you don't want an answer, don't ask me a question. And that's also a good leadership skill because that way you get more people on your side. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. 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 It's good stuff. This, so, uh, this is all important. Again, um, I like to know when I drive by a church what denomination mm -hmm. they are because sometimes you have to wonder. Um, it's just interesting to know. Uh, and I don't, and I'm, and I'm not really, I don't know how I feel about removing your, your logo from the thing or not admitting in the public sign what denomination you are. I don't know. Because Robin and I work with so many different denominations, we don't really hang, you know, a lot on each set, each one. We are Presbyterian, there is true, and I'm an elder, and, and Robin's been a deacon. So we've we've had our time into this world for many, 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 many years. What we're finding, though, is this change, I don't know if it bothers you young people, but I know it bothers the experienced people, because we're not getting the answers too wide. So keep asking questions, keep on board, and as you drive by these places, Pop pay up attention. the questions and pay attention. I see our time is running short like usual. So on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and Robin Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Our hope is that you've received a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. If you have any questions on today's or comments on today's program, don't hesitate. Give us a call, 727-422-1833, or send me an email, dick at ewfw.org. And when you're ready and you know that you want some great speakers to come to your location and speak about accountability and leadership, give us a call. Miss Robin and I will be glad to come out and make that happen. 727-422-1833. Dick at ewfw.org. Robin, you got anything real quick? Have a blessed day. All right. Until next time, this is EW The Wrangler saying, 
ride hard, ride fast.